Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy. Today is part two of our multi part tutorial on how to use Incarnate. It's all about the brush tool. That's right, we're going to show you the basics on how to use the brush tool to make your maps stand out. Alrighty, folks, if you watched our other video, this is the island sample that I created using just the mask tool as we walk through how to use that tool and all of its various functions. Today we're going to actually go through and do a little bit of the brush tool. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open our map in order to edit. It's going to say edit map. And once we get loaded, last time we used this masking tool, well this time we are switching to the brush tool. And as a basic layout, it's gonna be very similar. Just below where you selected, you're gonna see the active texture up here in the top. Um, below is the catalog. The recently used are gonna be the various textures that you've reused. Now I've got a few loaded in, but at first you're only gonna have one or two, which are gonna be the textures loaded into your map. Um, below that you have a brush layer, which is gonna be your FG for foreground. The BG is gonna be your background. What that means is the foreground is gonna color all these land areas, okay? Just like that. And the background is gonna color just the water layers, okay? now. I say water layers, okay? Now, that could be lava, that could be, you know, dungeon floor, depending on how you want to make your dungeon. So it's going to give you some options, but you kind of get the idea. Background is for the stuff that you did not use the masking tool on, okay? Just below that, you can actually fill the background layer. So if I wanted to make that all, whatever that skull pattern is, boom, just like that. Just below that, you're going to have your various different shapes of brushes we go from edge which is going to give you much more of a uh, jagged appearance okay it's going to give you those uh, sort of shaky edges the circle tool is going to give you much more of a round uh, presence grid once more it's going to give it to you in a grid pattern the selection tool square is going to allow you to make some square shapes circle same thing but circle star or polygon rather polygon is going to do sort of the same thing and allow you to change out your polygons. Now, if you're not familiar with those tools, a quick rundown. In the square tool at the top, you're actually gonna see a couple of options. The opacity is gonna be there, as well as the slider for it. Um, and then you can you know, choose any of your tools. The polygon's gonna give you a couple more choices. Up at the top, it's gonna give you the different various sides. You can go all the way up to 10, yep, I believe, all the way down to a simple triangle. Now, uh, assuming we're starting to make our map for the first time, you know, what I suggest, they give you the circle tool for a reason, and that is definitely one that we can use. Inside of these brushes, it's gonna give you a size, and that's gonna change the actual size of the brush tool that you're using. The opacity is going to change how light or dark it goes all the way from 0.01 all the way up to 1 which is 100% opacity that 100% opacity is going to completely shade in whatever it is that you're doing if you drop it down you can see how it'll lighten it up a little bit with each pass okay with that opacity tool you notice the darkness that we got with that one pass well if I click the mouse again you notice that it's going to give me a little bit more in the middle so every sequential time that you click and drag over that area it's gonna make it a little darker and use that opacity now right away that's gonna give you options to shade it uh, to transition from one type of environment to another okay then lastly the softness tool the softness tool is gonna sort of give you some faded edges okay so if we were to make a swipe through here if we were to go ahead and change our opacity up and we're gonna make a swipe through here okay it's subtle but you can see right through here how the edges seem to taper off if we were to take that softness all the way down you can see that the edges are much more sharp and crisp uh, giving you more of a defining characteristics below we then have some advanced settings which we'll get to here momentarily but the placement really allows you to line up a texture or change the size if you were to drag this you can see how the texture inside the map panel will actually uh, shrink and enlarge just like that so some textures especially things with more rigid items such as uh, this skull pattern that we sort of looked at a second ago, it'll change the size of the skull so you can make them huge or you can make them small. Rotation is going to do the same sort of effect. It's going to rotate the map. You can slowly see it rotating one way or the other. The X offset is going to make it go up and down. The Y offset is going to make it go left and right. All right. So, assume we're going to switch it back to zero, rota zero rotation. Offset's gonna be, you know, we'll stick with the standard offset, which is zero, not 100. And once you've got this set back to zero, 
Uh, we also have a filters option. Now that's gonna allow you to change the colors inside of the actual brush. So the hue, as you rotate it or move it sideways, you can actually see that it will change the overall color of the texture. So if you want like a slightly different shade that you do not see inside of the catalog, that's an option for you. Saturation is gonna take it all the way down to grayscale. Again, maybe you wanna taper it up. Maybe you don't like the look of the standard textures and it can take it all the way up and it'll make it super vibrant. And that's you know good for all kinds of various terrains. So. Uh, brightness is going to do exactly what it sounds like. If you make it dark, it can be for like a dead forest or, you know, just an area that you want to low light. Uh, all the way up to super brightness, which is just going to blind you out of the screen. Um, but it allows you to change the brightness level of a given brush. And then, of course, contrast, which is going to make your darks dark and your lights lighter. Okay. Less contrast is going to kind of muddy it out a little bit. More contrast is going to make those individual uh, pieces sort of pop out at you okay so we're going, starting off with our filters and things back at our normal location filters is typically something i would suggest for later on down the road so now that we've gotten our basic map let's say we want to change the color of it right so looking at it to me this is sort of feeling tropical so i'm going to choose my foreground layer and then choose fill foreground all right so that's going to give us a basic color throughout the entire range of the map and then what i like to do is go through and we're going to choose some areas that may be more densely uh, situated with plants animals maybe some swamps and things like that all right so using the circle tool is certainly a good option. It's the option that they give you. Now we're gonna go in and start to fill in some of these colors, okay? Now one thing we can do is I like to do the coastlines. So I go into the catalog and I'm gonna choose like go for the barren lands and there's various textures inside of here. Now some of these textures you can see like this wasteland black have a pretty rigid structure inside of them. Uh, some of the desert ones are going to give you dunes and some hills and things like that. So be cautious about that as you start painting. You don't necessarily want to choose one that's going to give you rigid textures if that's not what you're looking for. So once we've chosen that texture, we're going to start with the desert here. Uh, I'm going to switch this up to the edge tool. And I'm going to lower my opacity down here in the bottom left, okay? Just a little bit. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to kind of fade it into the rest of the landscape, all right? So starting off with that tool, just pick a spot. And since we've chosen that star shape, right, you notice it's going to give us that jagged coastline. Now, do you have to paint everything? No, absolutely not. Again, this is really all up to you. I'm just going to paint a few of these edges in the middle, uh, maybe some of the ones around some of these little inlets. Okay, it's all up to you. And since we're on that foreground layer, it's only gonna paint the foreground. Uh, if you were, by the way, if you were to go back to that mask tool and you were to add some locations, you see that it painted the foreground in the areas that you did not make land in already. So you know, keep that in mind when you do place new land, it'll be whatever color that you uh, put in the foreground, all right? So I'm gonna do a couple more here. My roughness on this brush is set to eight, so it's it's not real jagged or not real chonky. Okay, so we've made some uh, some deserts just like that. Now, going through the rest of it, we, let's say we want to taper that out a little bit. Okay, so just that easy. We're going to switch that opacity down. We're going to switch it down pretty low to 0.3, and running over the same outline of the area you just did. By doing that, it's going to give you just a little bit of shading around it, right? So you don't want those harsh transitions necessarily. If you do, great. If you like that look. Uh, if you don't, this is going to give you a good option uh, to sort of feather it out to the rest of your map. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to look at doing is we're going to take the inside land parts here and we're going to darken them just a little bit. And that's going to give us a little bit of texture inside of the colors. So choosing this brush, I'm going to choose a pretty dark color, but as you can see, I'm going to keep the opacity fairly low. We're going to go about half, okay? We're still on that star shape tool, so it's going to give us some chonky bits. Now, again, it's important to notice that every time you hold down the mouse button, notice that it's not getting darker. Now, if I were to click it again, notice that that shade gets a little darker. And anywhere that they overlap is going to give you a darker color because that opacity is going to build up inside of there, okay? So we'll run it over a couple of times. And you'll notice it's a little odd, right? Like it's a little abstract. And for right now, that's just fine. We're just going to tap them in here. And you notice that it starts giving us some colors uh, that maybe we wouldn't have seen inside of the texture tool, all right? And it's going to give you some sort of camo shading and that lets you give a little bit of texture to your earth and ground, okay? 
Now, once I've kind of got the darker areas laid out, maybe they're for forests, mountains, swamps, you know, anything you really want them to be, I'll go back over with my original color. I'll drop that opacity down just a little bit more uh, and then hit kind of the edges, all right? And what that's gonna do is, it's, again, it's gonna shade it into the rest of the map so that it's not such a stark difference uh, from the rest of the landscape. And just like that, you know, boom. Hey, you can sort of see how that sort of camo pattern is showing through and it's sort of helping it blend into the rest of the the lines right so i want to do a couple of passes like that all right boom there it is that is shaded okay and again it looks a little rough right now but once you start adding some land features this uh color pattern is going to make a whole lot more sense okay now we've done the land portions now let's switch over to the background layer and we're going to do some water as well you know, the water out here is just fine, but if you're looking for something a little more, uh, I like to take it and break it up just a little bit. We're going to choose this water blue green. Again, we're still on this 0.3 opacity, uh, and we're just going to sort of draw around, around the outside layers of the map. Again, holding down that mouse button, it will not shade over it again. All right, sort of follow the contours just like so. All right. Now I'll let it up sometimes, but I try not to overlap on this first pass. All right. Look at that. Just like that, we've already gotten, you know, what looks to be more of a dark area to our water. And if we go over the same areas again, maybe just a little bit less of them, you can see how it's starting to form layers on the outside of that water. Again, it makes it look as though that water is a little bit deeper. All right go quite as far in to leave some of that mid color all right and you know darken it up as much as you'd like the pattern doesn't have to be real specific you can see I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit and you want that to be sort of a natural ebb and flow in the process right all right so assuming we've made a little bit of water like so all right now we've got some deeper waters, we've got some little more shallow waters, we've got some sand, we've got some grasslands, we've got a place where we're gonna be able to put a forest, okay? Now, another thing I like to do is take a lighter color, let's go to the catalog. Uh, we're gonna go down to the bottom here where we have water. Let's do something really bright, like this blue water five, water blue five. All right, we're still on the background layer. I'm gonna up that opacity quite a bit. And the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna take my lakes and rivers and any sort of inland and I'm gonna shade them a different color now I'm using a pretty bright blue color here you can certainly choose anything you like and you can do the same things if you wanna for example look if we take this brush size down quite a bit alright and then we go up to our darker water then just like that we can pop in a few places where the water gets deep in the middle of our lakes okay Again, it's all about making it look as good as you want it to look. If you want it to look super straightforward, you feel free. If you want to shade it out or, you know, find your own method to shade it out, no harm in that, right? And just tap a couple more in here. All right, just like that. So now we have a few different shades. It's going to give us a little bit of that color changing depth that we were hoping for, right? Now, one more thing as we're going over that water, uh, let's go back to our original water texture. We're gonna drop that opacity down quite a bit. I'm gonna take it to about a 0.3. Once we've got that opacity set to a 0.3, I'm gonna change our brush back to a circle, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow that softness down here, we're gonna set that back up. It's gonna allow that softness to sort of help blend those layers together a little bit, okay? So, just like that. I'm just gonna swipe over the areas where the colors kind of mix together. And hopefully you can see here that it sort of starts to blend them in together so it's not such stark, open, or stark differences in the color palettes, all right? Again, yeah, we're going over some of the same areas twice. But again, now you can see that it's got some depth in that color. Now, again, we can do a later video about these advanced settings because some of them are a little tricky, and especially when we start talking about stamps. But there you have it. You have some shaded ground, some shaded water, and we're prepared to put some icons all over this map with our stamp tool. So don't forget to check out our next video all about stamp tools and incarnate. Yes, that's right. We're going to walk you through in the same process we did here on how to use the stamp tool. If you like the various shading techniques, check out my other video on shading your incarnate maps. It's gonna give a little bit more of a tutorial on how to use the shading options with the paintbrush uh, to make your maps more dynamic. And as always, we're gonna pop down to the bottom and make sure that we save our changes, okay?
not saving your changes and you exit, all of that beautiful shading work is going to go to waste. Well, that just about wraps us up for today. Thank you for joining us as we explored how to use brush tools and incarnate. I've been your host, Some Dungeon Guy. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed what you're watching today. And drop us a comment below if you have other ideas for videos in the future. And as always, have a good day.